Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this month of October as we'll be looking at the topic of faith in a little way. Help us to, to grasp the principles of biblical faith that can guarantee victory for us. Amen. Eyes of understanding. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be wondering why we are looking at the topic of faith before I go into it. In 1 John chapter 5, see what the scripture says over there. You want to live an overcoming life, okay? You need this faith. First John chapter 5. The scripture tells us, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You will see that your overcoming is linked with your faith. Faith is or gives the victory. And that's very, very important for us to understand that faith is fundamental. In Hebrews chapter 11, why do you need to develop your faith? Because that's where Christianity starts. That's what sustains Christianity. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can only seek God by faith. You can only please God by faith. The Bible says it is impossible to please God. We come into the Christian life by faith. We are sustained in the Christian life by faith. We are born again by faith. We live by faith. Even when we want to die, we die. We don't die by faith, but we die in faith. Look at Hebrews, that same Hebrews chapter 11 where you are. Look at verse 13. Let me show you. Hebrews 11, verse 13. This all, talking about the patriarchs, he has talked about Noah, Abraham, he has talked about Abel, he talked about Enoch. Then he said, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So we are born again by faith. We are sustained and we live by faith. And we die in faith. So show me somebody in whose life faith is lacking or missing. I show you somebody who cannot live the Christian life. He's completely out of the Christian life. So we ought to understand the importance of the faith we are talking about. Today, we are concentrating on the word of faith. And as we are looking at this word of faith, you know, there is, in the Christian dog, there's what we call the word of faith movement. And that has actually given a lot of bad connotation to the word of faith. The word of faith has been relegated to the back burner in many Christian circles today. And this is due to the charlatan and often times on scriptural behavior of ministers associated with the word of faith movement. They call it a movement. But this word of faith movement is almost become sometimes they also call it the prosperity gospel movement. And it's all, all, almost like a kind of a a movement that is more based on funding the luxury 
of the people that are needed. The minister will come and say, well, I just received the word of faith that all the money in your pocket, you should sow it into the ministry. And you have $10,000 in your pocket, they expect you to put it down. They never receive the word of faith that says, I've just received the word of faith that God says, I should give you 1,000. He giving somebody else that money to meet the need. But it's always they having the word of faith to tell you, sow your car, sow your seed, sow your house, sow your money, empty your pocket. And instead of using all that money, you know, to preach the gospel, what are they using it to, to fund their own luxury, their own indulgence, buying cars upon cars, jets upon jets, you know, living luxurious lives, buying yachts and coke, and they want to show that God is good, he prospers, not because of the work we have done, but because of the money people have contributed, and that's the way they are using it. No. And because of that, so people don't even want to hear anything about the word of faith, but the word of faith is Bible. So the fact that some people have coined themselves as the word of faith movement, and their practices many times could be so unscriptural, does not mean that there is no word of faith. We need to remember that counterfeits point to the fact that there are the genuine. There are counterfeit coins. But you don't say you're going to spend, I mean, to stop spending money because there are counterfeit coins. There are counterfeit notes. But it doesn't mean that there are no genuine notes. Why the counterfeit? Go for the genuine or spend the money. And the same way that some people have perverted the word of faith does not mean that there's no genuine, true word of faith. And we are looking at the scriptural word of faith today. So learn. Don't learn because some people have polluted an area and then you abandon it. If it is God's territory, we need to clean up the mess and enjoy what God has given unto us as a territory. And the word of faith is God's territory. He's given it unto us. So people are trying to pollute it and to pervert it. We need to clean it up, enjoy it, and you will do so in Jesus' name. Amen. The word, the word of faith as revealed in the scriptures and ensure that our practice of it is within the boundaries of scripture. That the way we practice the word of faith is aligns with the will of God, aligns with the principles of God, and is within the boundaries of scripture. If we do, then we are okay. So today we are looking at the word of faith. The first thing we need to look at as we look at the word of faith is conviction and persuasion. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 in verse 8. The Bible says, for what said it? That is what does the scripture say? The word is nigh thee. This word of faith I'm talking about today is near you. It's just around you. And Paul says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. So where is the word of faith? In your mouth and in your heart. How do we know the connection? You're going to see the connection as we go on. But the word of faith is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Paul said, even what I'm preaching to you is the word of faith. And that word of faith is in your heart and is in your mouth. It's near you. You don't need to go far away to be able to find it. It's just near you, in your heart and in your mouth. How does it operate? Will be seen how it operates. How can I benefit from it? Will be seen how you can benefit from it. So the word of faith must first be rooted in the heart. Because when you talk about the heart and the mouth, you need to know that the heart comes before the mouth. You remember what Jesus Christ said? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth becomes speaking. So, if there is nothing in the heart, then what the mouth will speak will be emptiness. 
That's why when somebody is foolish in his heart, foolishness comes out of his mouth. When somebody is full of wisdom in his heart, wisdom comes out of his mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So first of all, there must be conviction and persuasion in the heart about faith. Because that before there can be confession and proclamation in the mouth of that faith. So that's how the heart and the mouth are connected when it comes to faith. The word of faith must first be rooted in the heart. Our heart is fully persuaded of the truthfulness of faith and of the veracity of the word of faith. We have, you know, all we have all utterly embraced the promise that are forever yea and Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at that Hebrews chapter 11 that I read to you that the patriarchs they died in faith. But well, you know I love these patriarchs because you see what the Bible says verse 30, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13 the Bible says these all died in faith not having received the promises God gave them promises. But the promises have not been fully fulfilled as at the time of their death. But look at what the Bible says. But having seen them, they saw it and found God told Jacob, your children will inherit this land. You didn't live to see it. God told Isaac, your seed will inherit this land. You didn't live to see it. God told Abraham, your children will live to and will, will, will inherit this land. Abraham didn't live to see it. It came to pass even after Joseph had gone. And Joseph told his people and said, the Lord will visit you. And the Lord will take you to the land he has promised. You will inherit it. When you are going, take my words, carry me along. Even in death, I want to inherit the land of Canaan. And you know that's what the children of Israel did. The time they left Egypt, they dug the grave of Jacob. They put his bones in container. They carried the bones along with them. When eventually they got to the land of Canaan and they entered the land of Canaan, they buried the bones of Joseph in the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Joseph said, I may be dead, but I want to inherit that land even at death. And he did. And if a dead man can have so much faith to inherit the land, my sister, you are alive. Won't you inherit the land? Yes, sir. My brother, you are alive. Can't you manifest faith to inherit the land? Uh, a dead man can manifest faith to inherit the land that he doesn't know whether that land will be there because he would have been dead. And yet he said, I am sure God will visit you and he will take you to that land. I want yeah. to be part of the inheritance. Don't leave me here. Dig my bones. Dig my dead body. Carry me along with you. What a faith. What a faith. They saw the plan, the promise are far off. It didn't happen in their time. But they knew that God's promises are here and amen. That God says what he means. That God means what he says. That God keeps his word. That God fulfills his promises. They saw it afar off. And because of that, they were persuaded. Look at that verse 13. These all died in faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded. That's the thing. Persuaded of them and embraced them. They were persuaded and they embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They were persuaded of the promises. I'm asking you this morning, are you persuaded of the promises of God? Are you persuaded that the promises are yea and amen? Are you persuaded that God says what he means? 
and God means what he says? Are you persuaded that God keeps his word? Are you persuaded that God fulfills his promises? These ones were persuaded. God said, I will give you a land. They saw it afar off. They've not had it until they are dead. It didn't materialize. But they said, don't worry. It's going to come to pass. God keeps his word. They embraced the promises. This morning, they persuaded. This morning, embraced the promises. That's the first conviction and persuasion of the promises in your heart. Faith must be rooted in the heart. There must be conviction. There must be persuasion. Let me give you this example. When I was to marry my wife, there were many times my mom said, am I sure? Because of the things that my mom saw, especially from the family. There was a day that my family went to their family and uh, my late mom's, I mean, my late, I mean, the, 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 the late mom of, of my wife, she chased everybody away. It was very terrible. And my mom said, if the mother can chase us away like this, <laughs> this family you are entering, are you sure? I told her I'm persuaded. I'm convinced. I wasn't shaking. Many, many things that the family went through, I said, there's no problem. God has spoken, and I'm sure if God is leading me this way, he has a solution to that problem. I'm not saying the problem may not be there, but he has a solution to the problem. What I'm trying to say is that conviction, you know somebody else will say, ah, if that's what to say, mama, I will just tell her it's over. Another man will just tell the lady, I say, go and find another person you want to marry you. I can't marry you. My family didn't like it. My family said, your family uh, chased my family away. We are not even married. This one has started up. My brother, do you have conviction? Has God spoken to me? Are you persuaded? I was persuaded. They talked to me so many times not to go into this marriage that <laughs> these in-laws are going to be a thorn in your flesh. This is going, they're going to tear your marriage apart. I told my parents, I'm persuaded. I'm going ahead. I'm convinced. That's why it's important in marriage. You need to be persuaded. You need to be convinced. And faith is like that. Thank God, I went ahead with the marriage. It's been glorious 33 years. I mean, a, a, a glorious years of marriage. It's been wonderful. 32 years of marriage has been really, really, 33 years. It's been really, really wonderful. I thank God for that. But I was persuaded. I was convinced. I embraced it because God spoke to me and I was sure. I didn't marry because I was infatuated. I didn't marry because, you know, I just wanted to get married. No. So there was conviction in the heart to follow through the same way. Is there conviction in your heart? Are you persuaded of the promise of God? Are you sure God keeps his promise? Do you believe that God will do what he said he will do for you? Do you believe when God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end, to give you a future and hope? Do you believe faith was first to be rooted in the heart? Conviction and persuasion must be. That's why those patriots, even though, even as at the time they died, the promises of God had not been fulfilled in their life, they were still persuaded. They saw it afar off and they embraced it. They said, okay, if it didn't get fulfilled in our time, it's our seed that God promised it. God will fulfill it in our seed. They, they held on and they died in faith. They didn't die in doubt. They didn't die in unbelief. They didn't die doubting God. They didn't die blaming God. You said you are going to do this. You didn't, 
didn't do anything, and now I'm dying. They saw it at Pharaoh. They were persuaded and they embraced it. I pray that this morning you will be persuaded and you will Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This heaven we are going is true. Some people are not sure. Is it just religious dogma? Oh, you need to be persuaded. This Jesus we are talking, are, are we really sure? We are sure. There's conviction in the heart. There's persuasion in the heart. We are very sure. We are not following cunningly devised labels. We are sure. Conviction in the heart. You know, that's why some people are not able to live the Christian life well because there is no conviction in the heart. When they pray over a, a thing and the thing has not uh, yet come to pass, when somebody suggests to them, I know one Baba, let's go and seek the oracle. They go astray because there's no conviction in their heart that God keeps his promises. If there's conviction in their heart, they won't be going to go and seek oracle. They won't be going to all these uh, fetish priests. They won't be looking that way. They are just sure that God will do my own. God will do as he has spoken. Conviction in the heart. Persuasion in the heart. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. That's what we're talking about. Full assurance of faith. Are you looking? Many of you are working. Why are you working? Today is 6th of October. Tomorrow is 7th of October. And you will go to work. Tuesday is 8th of October. And you will go to work. Ah, but if at the end of the month, your boss refuses to pay you. You know why you go to work? There is a full assurance in your heart that as I go to work every day, when the month end comes, my boss will pay me. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you ever doubt you wake up in the morning and somebody comes to you and says, are you going to work today? Say it. Ah, but if at the end of the month, your boss doesn't pay you. It never comes to you. That kind of thought never comes to you. And if the thought comes to you, you don't dismiss it. You know why? Because in your heart, you have a full assurance that when the month comes, your company will pay you. That's what we talk about full assurance. You have not had it. No. The salary is still at the end of the month, but you, you are sure that that salary will be yours. <laughs> you have a full assurance that that salary will be paid. Am I correct? Yes, That's what it means. When you have a full assurance of faith, it doesn't mean that the thing has been done, but you know that when the time comes, that thing will happen. Full assurance of faith. And verse 22 tells us, let us draw near. You want to draw near to God? Draw near to God with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our eyes sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without favoring. You can hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering, without, you know, oscillating. You know why? For oh, he is faithful. That's why you can hold fast without wavering. He is faithful that promised. What he promised, he will do. What he has promised, he will fulfill. Your boss says, if you work for me at the end of the month, I will pay you. You have faith in that boss. You have faith in that company. You are sure that if you work at the end of the month, they will not disappoint you. And you are drawing near to that company to work for the company in full assurance of that 
promise that if you work for us for one month, at the end of the month, we'll pay you. And they've been doing so. They have been in that company one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Some of you have been in where you are working 10 years. Some of you have been there for 15 years and they've never failed. You rise up in the morning, you wash, you dress up, you go to work. You know that at the end of the month, my salary is coming. You are drawing near to work for that company. Full assurance of faith. Knowing that at the end of the month, your salary will. And the Bible says we should draw near also to God with full assurance of faith. With full assurance of faith. You should hold on the confession of your faith without wavering. Why? He is faithful that God. If your boss can pay your salary at the end of the month, God can fulfill his promise when you believe. Conviction and persuasion in the heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, but I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse 20. Let's see the scriptures. Why should we hold back without wavering? Why should we, I mean, believe so that we are not staggering? It says, for all the promises of God. Oh. Mm -hmm. All. Not many of them. Not some of them. All the promises of God. In him, are ye, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. The promises of God, there is no nothing, there is no no about it. It's always yes and amen. And those promises in your life, I say yes and amen to them. Amen. You say yes and amen to those promises. Yes and yes. amen to my promises. The promises of God, they are yes and amen. And you also should say yes and amen. Oh, I like David. Somebody says, why do you like David? Let me show you something. And you should be like David, though. Yeah. Look at Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter seven. Second Samuel chapter seven. There was a time that David wanted to build the temple. And God told him he shouldn't build the temple. And God said, Well, Solomon, your son, will build it. Then God told David, I will do this for you. 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 Hmm. Look at 2 Chronicles, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 25. When God said that God said to David, when he finished, saying all what God will do for him. Look at David. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 25. And now, O oh Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. You know what David was saying? After the prophet had said, God said, I should tell you, he will do this for you. He will do this for you. He will do this for you. David was saying, yes, and amen. Yes, and amen. Yes, and amen. And now David said, and now, O oh Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. Thank God, I believe you. This word is rooted in my heart. I embrace it. I'm persuaded by it. I'm convinced of it. Establish it forever. Do as you have spoken. That's somebody that has conviction in the heart. That's somebody who is persuaded of the promises. A prophet has just spoken to him. And David said, oh God, what that prophet has said, do as you have spoken. The word you have just spoken to me through that prophet, establish it forever. I believe. 
How will God not bless this individual? How will God not fulfill his word in the life of this individual? And that must be our attitude, that there is conviction in your heart. There is conviction in your heart. There is conviction in your heart. You are persuaded and you embrace the promises. And as you do, the Lord himself, he will fulfill those promises in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of faith must first be rooted in the heart. Our heart is fully persuaded of the truthfulness and the veracity of the word of faith. We have all utterly embraced the promises that are forever, yea, and amen. We have the same spirit of faith as the Old Testament heroes of faith. And we'll see that one as we go on. Strong conviction and full persuasion in the earth provides the bedrock for the manifestation of strong faith. Without that, how do you want to manifest faith? Strong faith. If your heart is not settled, if the faith is not rooted, if you are not fully persuaded, look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. There must be there must be persuasion, and not just persuasion. The Bible talks about full persuasion. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, let me read from you to you from verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Before him, whom he believed, even God. Who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were? Who against hope believed in hope? That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Abraham was already 99 years old, and God says, We are going to give birth. Then, like Sarah was 89 years old, no more menopause, no more menstruation, everything has gone. The womb is now weak, not strong enough to sustain a baby. And yet God is saying, Sarah, you will give birth. At 89, the Bible says, both Abraham and Sarah, they had to believe in hope against hope. It was in the midst of hopelessness. God spoke and they believed. The whole case is, is even not hopeless. And God is speaking and you are not believing. They believed God in the midst of hopelessness. Physical things were completely against them. Everything biological was completely contrary to the promise. But they believed hope against hope because of what God has spoken. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now then, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He, he looked at the situation. He, 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 didn't, he, he discounted Sarah's weak womb, no longer ovulating. So where is the egg to fertilize? He, he discounted that. He, he looked at his own body. Even the, I mean, the male sperm at 100 is already very weak, may not be able to do anything. And he, he didn't consider the deadness of his own body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. But verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God True unbelief. Unbelief will make you to stagger at the promise of God. Doubt will make you to waver. But the Bible says, not wavering, not staggering, not wavering, not staggering. You are convinced. There is full persuasion. You stay rock solid on what God has spoken. He said, he staggered not at the promise of God. True unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. You remember what we read in Hebrews chapter 11? Those people were persuaded. Here the Bible says Abraham was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. That what God has said, God is faithful. And that was why God did what he promised to them. If you will be convinced, if there will be conviction in your heart, and if you will be fully persuaded, and if you will embrace the promise, God will do that which he promised he will do for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, no staggering, no wavering, but strong in faith. 
strong conviction and full persuasion in the app provides the bedrock for the maintain for the manifestation of strong faith. When faith is rooted in the heart, doubt, staggering, wavering, they are excluded. There is full persuasion. A heart that is fully persuaded of the word of faith judges God faithful who has promised. God is faithful who has promised. When God told Joshua, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, Joshua believed. And at the end of Joshua's ministry, he was able to say, not one word has failed. Of all the good promise that God made to Israel, all are come to pass this day. You know why? Because when God gave him the promise, he believed. And eventually, it came to pass. Let me tell you, as God gives you the promise, if you will believe, it will come to pass. Amen. So you need yeah. to understand that, that you need to believe. So it will come to pass. And as you believe, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No, very important. He believed and it came to pass. And we also can believe and it will come to pass every single time. Every single time. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Let me show you. Hebrews 11. Verse 11. We also give credit to, to Sarah. The Bible says true faith also. Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. He is no longer at 89, at 90 years of age. Most people, most people are already great grandmothers. Sarah was just becoming a mother at night. When many women would have been great, great grandmothers. She was already past the age of being a mother. She should have been a great grandmother at this time. This is not the time to start giving birth at night. You give birth at 25. You give birth at 30. You give birth at 35. You give birth at 40. Not at 90. She was already past age. But she believed God. She received strength to conceive seed. You know why? The Bible says, because she judged him faithful. That what God has promised, he will do it. I believe it. And she waited for it and she got it. If you will believe in your heart that the promise God has given you, that you will fulfill it, I'm telling you that promise will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. God Amen. Made the way for you in this nation. Maybe you're on the platform. Even your document is not, is, is not uh, they're not doing flusy and you don't have document and you are wondering, how am I going to do? But when God was bringing you, he told you, I will take you to a land. I will take care of you. I will help you. My brother, why don't you believe that promise? My sister, why don't you rise up? Don't, don't worry about how that promise will be fulfilled. Leave that one to God. Leave the execution to God. Let that faith be within you. That God, when I was coming here, God told me he will sort me out. God told me he will help me. God told me he will do this. If you will let that assurance of faith be rooted in your heart about that promise, God will work it out. God will do it. Amen. Amen. That's what it means. Rooted in the heart. Conviction over there. And God is faithful. Joshua said, not one word. God gave me the word. He gave me the promise. I believe it. That was at the beginning of my ministry. But now at the end of the ministry, I can testify. Not one word has failed. Of all the good words that God gave unto me, all are come to pass. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. God that is fully persuaded of the word of faith, judges God faithful, who has promised. Let's go back to that Romans chapter 10, verse 8. As there is conviction of the word of faith in the heart, it needs to go out. 
Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what said the word? What said it? The word is night day, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith which we preach. Look at verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see it again in verse 9. Connection between the mouth and the heart. You believe in the heart. Jesus died for me. He shed his blood for me so that I can be redeemed. If you now confess it, Jesus, I know you died for me. You died on the cross to shed your blood to bless me. I come to receive that salvation. You will be saved. Conviction in the heart. Persuasion in the heart. Leading to confession in the mouth. You will get what you And here, so as we are convinced, there's conviction of the word of faith in the heart. There's persuasion of the word of faith in the heart. And we have fully embraced the word of faith. Then we must follow it up with the confession and proclamation of faith in the mouth. Why? Let me show you the connection between the heart and the mouth. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Because you need to understand that the mouth and the heart they are connected. And you cannot separate it. Matthew chapter 12 verse 37. It says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Look at verse 33. Either make the tree good, and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Say so you cannot separate the tree and the fruit. You cannot plant mango and be reaping apples. So, the kind of tree you plant is the kind of fruit you get. Verse 34, old generation of vipers, how can ye be evil? How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the mouth is an overflow valve. For the heart. When you meet a man that is always talking a lot of rubbish, a lot of nonsense, a, a lot of dirty things about women, that gives you a window to what is going on in his heart. Out of the abundance of his heart, the mouth is you know, driving rough. It's because there is so much immorality in his heart. There is so much dirty things about women in his heart. And the mouth is voicing it out. Out of the abundance of his heart, the mouth is speaking. But when you see a man that is very gracious in his words, you meet somebody, God bless you. How are you today? I bless you in the name of the Lord. The Lord will help you today. He will lift you up. He will make his face to shine upon you. Glorious things will happen in your life today. The promise of God will be fulfilled in your life. When you meet a man that is speaking like that, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Gracious words in the mouth is an indication of a heart that is full of the grace of God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you find a wife that is always nagging the husband, nagging the husband, nagging the husband, you don't need to go far. The heart has a problem. The heart has a problem. The, prob the heart of the problem is the problem in the heart. Do you hear me? There's yes, no in the house. The wife is always nagging the husband. The heart of that problem of that nagging is the problem in the heart of the woman. The heart of the problem is the problem in the heart. Clean up the heart. Make the heart gracious. Nagging will disappear. 
You find the husband that is always angry with the wife, aggressive every time, foul language. You know, you will abuse the woman and say all sorts of things. The woman will just feel like going to commit suicide. You know the problem? The problem is the heart. That, that's not, the heart has not been touched. The heart is not tender. The heart, you know, it, it is, Christ is not dwelling richly in that heart. When Christ dwells richly in your heart, you can't say dirty things. You can't say aggressive words that will be hurting somebody else. You can't be angry. You know, saying things that will make somebody to go and think and commit suicide. No. You know what the Bible says? Let your speech be always with grace. For your speech can only be with grace if the heart is in grace. If it is not, it's not possible. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what does that mean? If your heart is full of the word of faith, the mouth we confess the word of faith. It was out of the abundance of that heart, the mouth speaks. So it's important for us to understand that, that the mouth is the overflow valve for the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Gracious speech in the mouth is an overflow of a gracious heart. The finding pronouncement from the mouth is an evidence of a defiled heart. It's normal. It's normal. Very normal. James chapter 3 tells us that if you see a source of water, let, let's read it. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 from verse 8. Very important. Go with me to the scriptures, James chapter 3. From verse 8, it says, But the tongue can no man tell is an horrible evil, full of deadly poison. There which bless we God, even the Father, and there which cause we man, which is made in after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. How can you use your mouth to bless and to curse? There is something wrong. You know why? It says, that a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter, a fountain of water. I want to go and fetch water. It gives me sweet water now. I go the next time. It gives me bitter water. Is that the way it is? No. no. If the fountain gives you sweet water, it will give you sweet water every time. If the fountain gives you bitter water, it will be bitter water every time. It cannot give you sweet water now and give you bitter water at another time. When that one is happening, there is a problem with that source. That source has a problem. And that's what they say. If with the same mouth you bless, with the same mouth you curse, then the source, the heart, then there's something wrong with the source. That's what he said. Verse 12, verse 12, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear only berries? No, fig tree will bear fig, will not bear bear only. Either a vine, which a, 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 a vine tree will bear vine, will not bear figs. He said, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You know, what he's saying is that if there's a problem that these people, look at it, verse 14. For if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and be not and, and, and lie not against the truth. You know what he's saying? If cursing is coming from your mouth, your heart is defiled. If things that ought not to come out of your mouth are coming out of your mouth, the heart has a problem. So how do I... The mouth is a window. The mouth is a window into the heart of an individual. If you meet a man that's always talking dirty about women, you already know his heart. The mouth is a window to the heart. You already know what's going on inside him. This is a man that is infatuated. This is a man that is lusty. 
This is a man that possibly is busy watching pornography and the, all those things that it is going on in his heart. That's, that's the man. It's easy. His mouth betrays him because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will be speaking. A dirty heart, dirty things will be broken. A holy heart, holy things will be broken. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we need to understand that. When we understand that, out, you know that's why the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. Of life. Out of your, your heart are the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. Out of the persuasion of the heart, the mouth confidently declares strong faith in the heart will lead to positive confession and bold proclamation in the mouth. That's it's important. What you believe is what we are going to declare. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Paul was quoting in that passage Psalm 116. Read that one when you get home. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, Written where? In Psalm 116. I believe and therefore have yeah. I spoken. We also believe and therefore if there is faith in the heart and you believe there will be declaration in the mouth you will speak. Paul said in the time past this is how they did it. We believed and therefore they spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. There's conviction and persuasion in the heart. There's confession and proclamation in the mouth. We believe, <clears throat> we speak. Confession and proclamation of the word of God. What do we learn? Those who strongly believe in their heart will issue from their mouth decrees that must of necessity be established. The Bible says you will decree a thing and it will be established unto you. If you are fully persuaded in your heart, when you open your mouth to give the decree, the decree will come to pass. You command and that command must be obeyed. If you truly believe in your heart and you don't doubt, you will speak to the mountain. The mountain will move and nothing will be impossible unto you. That's what Jesus said. These people, they give orders that must be carried out. Come out that unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit has no, no, cannot do anything. It just has to come out. That's what we need to understand when you decree, when you give orders, when you command, they must come to pass and be carried out. The Bible says, there is power in the mouth. There is authority. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Where the word of faith, rooted in the earth, is coming out, there will be results. And the Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. First point, certainty of performance. What we strongly believe in the earth if we confidently proclaim in the mouth, we surely come to pass. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, then you will see results. You will be saved. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, in verse 20. Mark 11, verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. 
And Peter, calling to, to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto him, unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. You believe it in your heart, and there is no doubt in your heart, and you are not staggering at the promise of God, and you are not wavering through unbelief. What does he say? Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, for shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe, it is in the heart, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. You know what he say? When we pray in faith, and there's persuasion and conviction in your heart, what you have prayed for will come to pass. My brother, don't worry. It will come to pass. Amen. Don't think about I, the how. Leave the how with God. God has many ways of fulfilling his promise. That's not your problem. Elijah wants to eat. God can send an angel to feed him. What's the important thing is what you need is food. Elijah is to feed. God can send ravens to bring him bread and flesh. What you want is what? It's food. The food will arrive. Elijah is to eat. God can send him to a widow that doesn't even have enough and there is no food and is fed. Food will always come, whether through the ravens, whether through the angel, whether through the widow of Zarephath. How it comes, how God does it, that is none of your business. Your business is to believe for the food that you need and the food will, will come. That's the problem of most believers. They are, work, they are trying to work out in their brain how that thing will be. That's none of your business. Leave that one with God. The way he wants to do it is the way he wants to do it. Let him do it the way he wants to do it. Leave that one with God. Your problem is to believe God for what he has promised you. God, you promised me food. If today he says, okay, I will send pots to bring the food. That's his own problem. If he says tomorrow, I will send an angel to cook for you and to give you water. That's God's problem. If another time he says, well, I will send you to one woman that will feed you. My problem is, I need the food. And the food will come. God has promised. He will keep you alive in time of famine. The promise will be fulfilled. You also should believe God. What God has spoken, God always does. What we strongly believe in the heart, if we confess and confidently proclaim it in the mouth, it will surely come to pass. The word of faith, when believed in the heart and confessed in the mouth, will lead to the wonders of faith. When strong persuasion of faith in the heart joins hand in hand with confident confession, of the word of faith in the mouth. Mountains will move. Mountains must move. Without removed and without casting to the sea, conviction in the heart, confession in the mouth, that mountain must move. Go and show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain. And you believe it in the heart. And you tell Ahab, God is sending rain. Go and eat and drink. The rain, great rain will come. God says, I'm ending this famine. I'm sending food tomorrow. You believe it in the heart and you proclaim it in the mouth, the abundance will surface. This time tomorrow, two measures of barley, you'll send it for a shekel. A measure of fine flour, it will be sold for a shekel at the gates of Samaria. If you believe it in the heart, you proclaim it in the mouth, this time tomorrow, you will see the manifestation. Always, heart and mouth, heart and mouth, 
Heart and mouth, heart and mouth. Conviction and persuasion in the heart, confession and proclamation in the mouth. When those two meet, they join hand in hand. Performance always comes. Certainty of performance. Every single time. Every single time. Great rain must descend. The cripple must walk. The sun and the moon must stop in their horses. Remember, Joshua, he said, we need light to finish this job. It's already becoming dark. Sun, moon, stay there. Give me light because I need to finish this job. Didn't it come to pass? Yes. He believed it in the heart. He spoke it out and there was a fulfillment. And the Bible says, the sun and the moon stayed in their courses for about the whole day and gave them enough light to finish the job. There will always be certainty of performance. What has God spoken to you? What has God given you? Look at Acts chapter 14, verse 10. Acts chapter 14, verse 10. Acts chapter 14, verse 10. Let me read in verse 9. Let me read from verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. And there, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heart Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. This cripple, as he had the gospel, faith developed in his heart, and Paul perceived that this man has enough faith in his heart. Verse 14, said with a loud voice, stand upright up on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. There was faith in the heart of Paul. If I speak to this man, I can see there is faith and expectation in his heart. He will be healed. And faith in the heart of Paul, and faith and expectation in the heart of the people, Paul spoke, stand upright and be healed. And the Bible says, and he lives and walks. There will always be performance, conviction, and persuasion of the word of faith in the heart, confession and proclamation of the word of faith in the mouth, there will be certainty of performance every single time. And it can happen in your life. And you must make it happen in your life. Every day you rise up, speak what God has spoken concerning you. First of all, let it be rooted in your heart. You believe God. That God said, I know the thought that I think towards you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. To give you an expected day. To rise up in the morning. God, thank you for this day. It is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You have spoken concerning me. That your thought towards me are thoughts of good. I receive those thoughts of good. I receive all that goodness. And you have promised to give me a future and a hope. I receive that future and the hope. I receive it this morning. I receive the expected end. Let me tell you, there will be manifestation. You will be seeing the goodness. You will be seeing the hope. You will be seeing a bright future. You will be seeing the expected end. Goals will be coming to pass. Things will be happening in your life. Everything will be falling into place. I will be talking and say, what magic are you using? There is no magic. The word of God, conviction and persuasion in the heart leading to compassion and proclamation in the mouth, it will ultimately lead to certainty of performance in your environment. And I pray that today, as you take the word of faith, as you allow it to be rooted in your heart, you are convinced of it, you are persuaded of it, you embrace it, you are persuaded, you don't stagger at the promise of God, you don't waver through on true unbelief, or you are strong in faith in your heart, and as you make proclamation, as you make declaration, as you hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, as you hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering, as you move on, not allowing doubt or anything to cloud you, you will be seeing manifestation. Let's rise up and pray. 
Are you tell God and say, God, I'm telling oh, you. This is the Help me to be founded and rooted upon that truth that faith See with you who rooted in you increase my faith to go Every word you spoke to me, oh God, to believe to hold up my heart to go And to claim it, oh God, to come to reality, In the name of Jesus, I look upon to the oh God before it's going to be the head and not the face. Move your life forward with the word of faith. Move your career forward with the word of faith. Move everything around you forward with the word of faith. I will say it to God, Baba. In the name of God, Lord, concerning the things we are Lord, as we are focusing on the world, we are focusing on the world. I will go to my feet in my good old nation. That is your word, I believe your word. It's as well to the world and to the land. So do not have dominion of this world. There shall be no faith, there shall be no there shall be no partner. Let God bless you as a The fruit of life is the fruit of every good thing goes for Baba. Help you go to your academics. Believe it in your heart. I believe you are for me, and it will not return to you, oh, I do God. In the name of Jesus, I stand by your two words. In your word that cannot be added to the Lord, that not if you move me to doubt your word, Papa. I will be to persuade in my heart to God. That you are able, you are able to do that. You are able to persuade me, to send my wife, to send my money, to send my family to God. To send your soul to God. For it is true that you are full of the spirit of the knowledge of the Lord. The word of God. That you are. Don't let it be as a as it is concerning me, as it is concerning my wife, as it is concerning my family, as it is concerning the church of Baba. So it shall it be for Baba. I stand by that true word you are declared. Move your marriage forward. Move your word of faith. Move your career forward. Move your marriage forward. Move your life forward. Move the word of God by your word. Baba, we are moving higher. We are moving forward. The family, God to be married, to be married, who 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 to be to be to do the power that could tell us where you go. Let him manifest the purpose in my life. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I receive your power. I receive your power. I receive your covenant. By faith in my life, they will come to fulfillment. No power can stop me to go by my There will be a performance to God. I think as we have declared, and I believe it to God, and I proclaim it to God with my mouth to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, my name. We pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of faith that is nigh us. Thank you, Lord. In our hearts Amen. and in our mouths. Amen. And today we receive your promises in our life. We receive them with conviction and persuasion. Amen. We embrace those promises. Amen. Because you have said, you have said you will give them spirit of wisdom and understanding. Oh Lord, Amen. in our heart we receive that with believing promise. And in our mouth we confess that every student in a new Christian school 
spirit of understanding, spirit of excellence, comes Amen. over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In their marks improvement, in their tests improvement, in their exams, we claim it with establishing with decree in Jesus' name. Amen. But you have said that you will send the solitary in families, those who are among us, men and women, that ought to get married. That's your promise that you always say to people. You said those who are, I mean, solitary, you set them up in a family setting. That's your word in, in, in Psalm. Oh Lord, we are praying as there is conviction and persuasion in the heart. We make a proclamation and confession in the mouth that within a short time, according to the desire of their heart, they will be married in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In our lives, in our marriage, in our career, we want to move things forward. The thoughts you have towards us, they are thoughts of good, never thoughts of evil. Why are we experiencing evil in this world? Evil, evil in the family. When that's not God's thought to us, we establish your promise that your thoughts towards us are thoughts of good. And we are only expecting good. And we are only looking for the good. And we are only going to get better. And we confess it in the name of Jesus that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days Amen. of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Word of faith, conviction and persuasion in our heart, confession and proclamation in, in our mouth. We use these things. We use this word of faith to move our family forward, to move Amen. the life of our children forward, to move Amen. our family forward, to move our health Amen. forward. Oh Amen. God, today, there will be forward movement in every area of our life as we dwell on the word of faith that as the out of the abundance of the word of faith that is rooted in our heart, our mouth is speaking, will begin to experience performance of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No staggering anymore at the promise of God through unbelief. No wavering anymore at the promise of God through doubt. No shaking anymore. We are fully persuaded we hold on the confession of our faith without wavering. Oh God, as we decree, the peace will be established. As we speak, Amen. mountains will move. As we Amen. confess, provision will manifest. Oh Amen. God, like David said, the things you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have spoken. I pray that the promises that you have given to your children as those promises are rooted by the word of faith in the heart. And as they make confession, there will be manifestation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because we know you have answered. As we go on in this series, oh Lord, open our eyes more on our faith and profit our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty and victorious name, I pray. Amen. Amen.